Welcome to my hot take about Milva. We're talking about one of the elephants in the room. At this point, it's already been confirmed that CDPR is going to hotfix Radovid to make sure he doesn't work with Uprising. So now I think we're at a point where everybody's eyes, at least in the Gwent community, is looking at Milva Sharpshooter. Now here is my hot take. I like the card. This card is actually the reason that today doesn't have a deck video. I literally ran into Milva decks only when I was trying to brew today. And I realized that my dream of Arachnus Queen Maddox was not going to happen because of this card. With that said, my hot take today is that I like this card. It's good for the game. And let me explain why. What makes Milva a well-designed card, especially, especially coming from the person who hates Vi and thinks, and thinks fundamentally that Vi is a terribly designed card. Let's start with the worst part of her design. The interaction. You are not able to interact with Milva unless your opponent flubs it really, really hard. Every time she pops out to kill something, hides in the deck. Simple as that. That's one of the reasons I really hate Vi. I can't interact with Vi. I know what the problem card is. I want to kill the problem card, but I can't do it. However, much as I hate to admit it, having non-interactive cards in the game of Gwent can be okay. One good example would be Thesis here. Nobody uses the order ability. We all pretend it doesn't exist. Let's be real. Thesis here is an eight for nine immunity. You're giving up a lot of points. These days, you can get eight quality points for just four provision, as long as you've built your deck properly. But instead, for five more, for five more points, you get immunity. Immunity. No interaction. Seems like a good trade-off. And at this point, you say, wait, but John, but John, Milva plays for a ton of points, and I can't interact with her, and kills a bunch of my stuff. But there are indirect costs. Mulliganing with Milva in your deck is really risky. The one or two your mulligans are probably forfeit for just running her. And that's an interesting idea. It's an interesting deck building cost. And if you th more you thin, more likely you are to accidentally draw a Milva. That's fascinating, right? Unlike Maddox, where Maddox's kind of like Super Roach, where Maddox will pop out of your deck, right? Maddox comes on out and he hangs in your graveyard. He doesn't punish you by going back in your deck and making you draw him again. That's always been really interesting. Now, so that, I would say, is an edge on the uninteractive bit. Hey, even though she it does deal damage, she comes into play. There is a cost to running her to your deck. So where Thesis' cost is the five provision, Milva's cost is your mulligans. Also, unlike the uninteractive card that I hate from the bottom of my heart, Vi, Milva requires thought, and this is really good. This is actually one of the, and arguably, arguably is the Maybe Milva is the best design card in this category. Milva requires more thought than any other card in Gwent. And to be blunt, it really shouldn't. But yet, somehow, just because of how the one and the two interact here, it does. When you move something, you might accidentally kill it, and then all of a sudden you ruin the escape route for Milva, and you have to blow another rule of tactics charge to try to fix the situation. I've seen people move something onto the back row. You're probably going to move from front to back but accidentally not realize they've bricked their back row and Milva is not going to come out of the deck because Milva does need a spot on the opposite row to appear. I've seen all of this stuff happen and I'm loving it. And I don't actually think it's just that this card is, card is new and fresh. I think it's because people actually struggle to use it. The card is fair in terms of how it reads. It's not like Viper, I'm reading a paragraph, and I'm like, how does this work? You read it, it makes perfect sense. You play with it once, makes perfect sense if you struggle with reading, that is. But then people mess it up all the time, and I love that. It adds a skill element, a skill element to a card game that's not like randomness. It's not trying to get three options and figure out which one's the best for the, your given situation. It's just, here's a card, it does some stuff, try not to botch it, and then people just love it. It's wonderful. Uh, let's see, what are some of the other complaints? One of the big complaints, like the real reason Milva is kind of broken right now, is 11 provisions here, and more importantly, Gorilla Tactics being one of the last, if not the single last, offensive ability of 16 provisions. 16 provisions. I want to make sure I say that nicely. Make it loud and proud. If you were to go through 
all of these leader abilities. Let's look at all the ones that actually can kill a unit efficiently. So monsters get zero. You can bleed and you can uh, weather, but that's that's slow. It's damage over time, right? Got nothing here. Closest you have for Northern Realms is Shield Wall for Anseus, but still requires a card to really work with. Rule of Tactics is offensive at 16. You can kill stuff. Typically in the past, there was two. You could play an offensive sentry for three if you really wanted to. Precision, Precision Strike is the preferred model, but that has been nerfed all the way to 14. Galaga Reckless Flurry is 15. Onslaught's now 16. We'll see how that goes. But it's not a ton of damage, not a ton of interaction for that damage three. Syndicate is blood money, I might as well hit that one up because it's on top of my head. Imprisonment's at 15 with two charges of lock. Now, Gruula Tactics plus Milva is basically five damage. Way ahead of the curve, but it's 16. Put it at 14, and I think the story starts to change a bit. Provisions being tighter sinks. Also, you can look to put this to 12. It's really important to keep in mind that any because of how provisions work in Gwent, unlike any other card game, it's really easy to balance any card in, in any card in Gwent. For example, if we were to go over the wolf pack here, if this was zero provision, it would be the most powerful card in the game. Straight up, zero provision. Because everyone would mulligan it all the time and their decks would be jacked. It'd be this powerful min-max deck. But this at zero, the most powerful card in the game. Likewise, uh, what is a really busted card? Radovid, my boy. This is pre-nerf Radovid. Not hot fixed. And so if somebody's watching this in the future and they hate Milva, and Radovid doesn't spawn three Scythe, or two additional Scythemen, potentially two more off of Uprising, beyond the initial one, Radovid's healing right now is 31 points. The floor is 12. Radovid here is, uh, imagine, imagine this is 30 here. Imagine this just said 30. 30. That's a lot. That is a ton of uh, provision. And it would probably be unplayable. All that matters here is that the provision is a powerful, powerful way to balance a card. Sunset Wanderer finally got bounced, despite it basically being a free card, guaranteed in your hand in round one. Potentially being 10 to 12 points of carryover to round three. That's insane. Milva can be bounced. Knock up a provision here. Knock one or two provisions off this, and then I think you'll see everything kind of fall into place. You can't get these ridiculous unitless lists put together. All in all, though, I'm really glad Milva's in the game. It's one of the most complex cards we've seen, and moves went in a direction of using your brain a little bit more, and I like that. It's fresh. I think it's a really fun card for unitless decks. It makes their mulligans more complicated, punishes you for hyperthinning. There's a lot of cool parts to this card. I hope, and also the two and one is brilliant. The idea that I can accidentally move, I can move something, have it pop out, accidentally kill my escape route, or if I play it right, potentially kill two things in one round, helping me set up uh, further, further powerful cards, like making a bomb all of a sudden, getting back online because I removed two things at once. It's fresh, it's beautiful. I'm a huge fan of Milva. And even though the reason this video is here today, this hot take is because I ran into six Goya Tell decks when playing Madoc, Arachnus Queen. Six of them. Six. Everything that went wrong. The moment I changed decks, no more Scoia'tael. The moment I changed back, Scoia'tael. Anyways, that was my day, and that's why we're doing a hot take video instead of a gameplay video. Thanks, Milva. Adore to death. I hope uh, more cards are like this. I hope genuinely more complex and bizarre and difficult cards are added. If I was going to say one thing about the new cards in Gwent, power levels are all kind of jacked, but... The complexity they bring to the game is fresh, fresh. This is the direction I can get behind. This, I don't know about the long-term growth of Gwent. I imagine cards, it looks like card dropping and new content. Journeys, for example, slowing down a little bit. Journeys in particular. But with that said, the one thing I will compliment CDBR on, 10 out of 10, I love the direction of the cards. They're getting more complicated. And that is adding some spice. Spice, baby. That I think this game needs. Anyways, those are my thoughts. Now all of you guys can spam the angry comments down below letting me know why Milva is wrong, if I'm a hypocrite on anything. But bear in mind, if they're able to bounce Sunset Wander, they can bounce Milva. It'll be fine. I'll see you all in the next video. Oh yeah, by the way, guys, by the way, 
It's recorded offline. Notice, no Twitch chat. Just for you guys, the YouTube fam. So make sure you leave a like. Let me know that you appreciate these. That's kind of a shallow ask, I will say. Instead of that, instead of me asking you shallowly for likes, why don't I just tell you guys, YouTube fam, I love you guys. Love it. And love all of you. Thank you all for being so wonderful. And I will see you in the next video. Shout outs to Ahmed Ali, Winston McRandar, and pseudoname81 for all being such unbelievable and excellent human beings and patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much.